the tenure of President Bola Tinubu as chairman of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, effectively came to an end on Sunday. However, in a dramatic twist, his colleagues at the 65th Ordinary Session holding in Abuja decided to give him another year. Our Arise correspondent takes a look at President Tinubu's first year in charge of ECOWAS. In the what should have been the end of an era and the beginning of a new one for ECOWAS was averted on Sunday as the regional body hands Nigeria's President Bola Tinumbu another one year to stay the ship. The last one year with Tinumbu in charge has been a period of tough political turbulence, especially with a resurgence of military coups in the sub region. Throughout this period, Tunumbu maintained a firm stance against unconstitutional changes of government in next-door neighbor republic and elsewhere in Guinea and Burkina Faso and Mali. On his watch, ECOWAS imposed economic sanctions on the junta regimes in these countries. Although ECOWAS subsequently lifted the sanctions, opting for a more diplomatic solution, the move by ECOWAS had strained relations with fellow West African countries on Saturday announced intention to completely cut themselves off and have nothing to do with the regional bloc. As part of efforts to manage and stabilize the politics in the South region, President Bola Tinumbu played a significant role in the successful outcome of the 2024 presidential elections in Senegal by facilitating talks among the various political stakeholders to avert the major political crises in the country. But on Sunday, ECOWA has re-elected Tinumbu to continue to lead the regional body. Omo Bazwai Arise News. Well, joining us now is Joshua Bolarinwa, Associate Professor and Head, Division of Security and Strategic Studies, Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, Lagos. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. Well, Professor Bolarinwa, good to have you again. Thank you, sir. On the morning show. Well, a day to the... Um, 65th uh, ordinary meeting of the ECOWAS heads of state in Abuja. The leaders of the Alliance of Sahel States met in Niamey, Niger, and they formally declared their union under the auspices of the AES, as they call it. Now, and yet, at the meeting in Abuja, President Tinubu re-elected as ECOWAS chair uh, he's sending President Fai of uh, Senegal uh, and uh, President Four, Yansingbe, to keep talking to the uh, military leaders in Niger, Mali, and uh, Guinea-Bissau. Now, from a strategic point of view, isn't uh, ECOWAS really disintegrating or at the point of disintegration, despite the good intentions of the ECOWAS chair and his um, colleagues? Yes, of course. Uh, you are right, sir, but let's put things in the right perspective. ECOWAS has been facing these challenges uh, before uh, President Bola M.M. Tinubu became the chair of the ECOWAS, far before he was elected as Nigeria's president in 2023, because both Mali and Burkina Faso uh, had been under military junta before he came in. The only coup that occurred during his own tenure was the coup in Niger. That's under ECOWAS. Yes, about 24 hours before the uh, 65th uh, ECOWAS uh, ordinary sessions of the heads of states and governments, the Association of uh, Sahel States, Alliance of Sahel States, are uh, having both Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger met, and they agreed and indicted ECOWAS that ECOWAS failed to tackle insecurity, particularly terrorism and insurgency. And all those things have affected them, and it's one of the reasons why they opted to have this alliance of their own three states. But beyond that, ECOWAS has done its best. ECOWAS has tried what it could do. But while these countries have their challenges, they should not heap everything on ECOWAS. They should not heap everything on ECOWAS. 
because even since they have all opted out of ECOWAS, they are still facing security challenges, particularly our terrorist attacks, insurgencies, and all of that in the three countries. Presently, there is a report, a global report on terrorism that was released that Burkina Faso has become the headquarters, the headquarters of terrorism. And most of the terrorist organizations in the Sahel and even within the ECOWAS region, they are regrouping. They are regrouping in Burkina Faso. And number of deaths are arising from terrorism or terrorist attacks in Burkina Faso is presently the highest in the entire African continent. So uh, they themselves too, as alliance uh, of states in the Sahel, they have their internal problems. Okay. They have their uh, security issues. All right. And ECOWAS have been making efforts to correct all of Let's this. Let's talk about ECOWAS's efforts. Uh, because I, I, I want to latch on to the statement that you said, when you said ECOWAS have done their best. I want to use a case study of Southern African Development Community, which is a Southern African version of, of ECOWAS, uh, when there were issues with Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe and they were clamping down on freedom of speech and so many things that were happening. And there was pressure from South Africa as the neighbor nation to, do, to take some sort of action. People said they should impose sanctions. But South Africa said, Zimbabwe are our brothers and our sisters. We can never impose sanctions on the people who need to cross the border to come into South Africa to seek for a better life. Now, when you close the border and you impose sanctions on Niger, do you think that was ECOWAS's best effort at trying to manage that very, very volatile situation that was transpiring? That was an ECOWAS decision. And as at that time, it was warranted as an element of deterrence. So it of was a course, good decision. Huh? It was a good decision. No, it was a critical decision that was needed to be taken. As at that time, the best way to send fear into a country like Niger, Niger, please, we need to put in the right perspective. Niger is Nigeria's immediate neighbor. Not only that. Niger has the longest border. Among Nigeria's immediate neighbors, Niger has the longest border with Nigeria, spanning seven northern states. And that alone is critical, strategic, important to Nigeria's survival. So Nigeria's security interest is subsumes or aligns with the ECOWAS uh, uh, regional uh, uh, security uh. interest. And with that, ECOWAS needed uh, to we, send we, we, and to stop the spate of coups around that time. Okay, no, Mali has had, Burkina Faso uh, had followed, uh, even in Central Africa, Gabon had come. So, DJ came in now. So, we needed, so, ECOWAS can, needed can to take that strategic decision. With your respect, it was yes, a sir. stupid strategic decision and it ended in failure, with your respect. And you saw what came out of it that President Nobu was trying to amass troops to fight an American proxy war and the National Assembly had to stop him on this. You saw the protest. And those are part of the problems we are still suffering today as we speak, as regards even food getting across the border. So with due respect, ECOWAS has not done well. I think the way forward we should now ask is, is this ECOWAS stabilizing force that we are talking about? Please, sir. Nigeria do not have the money to run it alone. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Of course. Nigeria do not have the money. Where are we going at to get times, the money to run it? At times, that is your fear. That is the fear in some quarters. Mm. But it, it cannot be a stupid decision. Okay. That was an institutional decision. Not only an institutional or organizational decision, it was, an, it was a decision taken as at that critical period in the interest of ECOWAS. And more importantly, Nigeria. Nigeria in the sense that, I've just said it, mm. strategically, Niger, Niger has the longest border with Nigeria. Niger, Niger, that border covers seven northern parts of state, uh, northern states well, the, in Nigeria. But well, the northern states carried and, along in that decision. No, sir. They were not. They were, so they, it's not a stupid at that decision. level, no, no, it's not a stupid decision. <laughs> at that level, it was not even Nigeria's decision alone. It was 
an ECOWAS decision. So, and as at that time, so that's why Nigeria needed that's to also play its role so, so that, that's in what, no, hang on driving on. home that's the decision I'm, of the ECOWAS. I'm asking about in the, driving home, so, that's so it I'm, cannot be stupid. So, because sir, at would, that time, would, would you it respect? was strategic, would you it was respect? important for the survival of Nigeria. That's and what, ECOWAS, would you respect, if you will let me speak, sir? That's why I asked a very important question as regards the ECOWAS stabilizing force, which in the end, they will push it to Nigeria. And I insist on it being a stupid decision there because they took the decision. They knew it was Nigeria that was going to fund that war. They wanted to start then. I hope you... So at this point in time, that we're talking about an ECOWAS stabilization force, how can we get the other ECOWAS members to put money on the table? That's my question to you. Okay, thank you. You know, that was also a critical, a critical point made or decided at this fifth ordinary uh, session of the ECOWAS as of state and government yeah. that they are now going to operationalize ECOWAS standby force. Yeah. That's what it's called. ECOWAS standby force. It How will are we be, going to get the money? Wait, wait. It will be contributory. Okay. States within ECOWAS will contribute. Community, community level. Uh, yes, sir. So okay. they will thank, come thank in. And so secondly, much. quickly, sir. Secondly, yeah. quickly, sir. We need to wrap up. The chairman, President Bola Metlubu, also emphasized, and it became a decision of the ECOWAS that while we, we have the political will, because of time. we must also have financial we need, commitment we need to, wrap to fund up because of the time. ECOWAS we need to standby wrap up force. Of time. Thank, thank you so much. So to put things in right perspective. Yes, sir. Financial commitment. You are correct. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Professor Bola. Thank you.